I'm Afida Halabeshin, and I'm here to tell you what happened next. As you recall, the last time I was basically researching and we boiled it down to three options for treating my basal cell carcinoma because I had to wait 8 to 12 months to get Mohs surgery, which was the recommended treatment option, with a growth rate of 0.5 to 0.7 millimeters per month of my tumor and waiting eight months to a year and a half for Mohs surgery, we were looking at three options. One of them is to book a $3,000 US Mohs surgery with two weeks notice in the US so I could book it and they just needed two weeks and they would do it for me. The second one was to advocate through writing the letter to my dermatologist making case about why I needed to treat this sooner than a year, preferably very soon. And the third option was to look at getting a laser that was an NDEG laser based on the study by Orit Markovis from New York where she did a clinical study with 102 patients and basically was treating basal cell carcinoma with NDEG laser. One treatment and then they go home and then she checks every three months or so. So how do we find a laser? Here we are. We're not laser technicians, we're not dermatologists, we're not medical professionals and we're not estheticians or tattoo removal people. To get a laser that was the caliber of Oric Markovitz's laser was greater than 50,000 as a starting point and that's a used laser and it's 140 joules so super powerful concern around using it around the eye. Second option you can get a tattoo removal laser same exact technology two joules and that's in the thousand dollar range Canadian dollars. We decided it was worth a try to see if the tattoo removal laser would work. So John ordered it and we had holidays planned so we went on our Harley, came back and then the laser was there and the laser when it arrived was not without its issues. Anyway, John being John and you will get to meet him at a future episode where he will talk to you about the laser in greater detail than I can possibly tell you but we could at least afford to start treating the tumor and figuring out based on the research study how to go about it and with proper safety of course and an incremental approach so bit by bit we would try trial and error and check see if it's going down or, or reducing inside uh, we would try it so safety equipment first when you are being lasered you wear these and then the laser technician wears one of these to protect their eyes the other thing that we used is the surgical tape you know the not surgical I guess it's surgical tape but you punch a hole in it and so that allowed us to basically narrow in on the area we wanted to treat which was the tumor itself at five millimeters plus about uh, three to four millimeters around that and to focus that area and it makes it easier to, to do that so that's what we did and and we would radiate out he would radiate out in a semicircle trying to t to uh, treat it and and the area around it as far as pain management we use the toothache uh, numbing stuff that's called ambisol we also use lidocaine but from a patient's perspective uh, when a session lasts uh, about an hour and a half which we worked up to we didn't do it right away the ambisol works for a bit or the this stuff works for a bit but after a while you're kind of numb anyway so this isn't intended to, it's just intended to take the sting off at the initially so how did we work with the machine the machine is foot activated and so that allowed John to use his hands to position himself he had 
free hands to do that. And there's a kill switch. And I would give him feedback based on what I was feeling and the heat I was feeling or too much or too little or too close or too painful because we'd never used the laser before and we were trying to figure it out. So initially we started with about 500 pulses, uh, which is not a lot in laser terms for a two joules laser. And we'd wait, it would scab over and then the scab would go, still be red. And then we worked our way up to about 10,000. That seems to be the critical part. Partly it was to gauge my healing process because everybody's going to be different and how to work the laser, how I was feeling, how the tumor was responding. And we were doing it every, the minimum was probably three days or five days, depending on, on how much time I needed to heal the scab so you could actually see what was going on. And then we'd do it again. And so we did that and from about end of April till about end of July. It was actually the first, second week of July we stopped because I had an appointment with my dermatologist. And, and the irony of, of July was when the tumor, and it was going down by the way, so we were being successful. So even though we had thought if we weren't successful, we would return the laser, we were finding success. The tumor was shrinking with every treatment that we did, especially when we hit the 10,000 pulse mark. Uh, it was being more and more effective for that size of tumor and area. So the irony, as I mentioned earlier, of the tumor being gone, by the end of July, when I had my follow-up appointment with my dermatologist, was that that's when I got the call telling me when my surgery was going to be. My surgery was going to be April of 2024, which would have been a year and a month after I went to see my dermatologist for the first time in March of 2023. So that's how long. So our fear, our biggest fear really was about over-treating and doing damage. And as it turned out, I happened to have an optometrist checkup at the end of July as well. So I got a full checkup of both eyes and he did the field test and everything. And apparently my eyes are better than the last time I got them checked. So I don't know, but there was no damage and everything was good. So I was happy. And this concludes this episode. And if you want to find out how my appointment with my, my follow-up appointment with my dermatologist went when I went to see him in end of July and I had no sign of a tumor, tuned to the next video. And thank you for uh, watching and please hit subscribe. Bye now.